I'm Nancy from Black Sheep Knitting in Needham, Massachusetts. I'm um, sitting here amongst a whole bunch of things that are ideas for holiday gifts, because this is the time when a lot of us are madly trying to figure out what to get Aunt Norma or, you know, your son Joe, and we're frantic about what can we get them and what can we, and what I think is one of the easiest things is to, to make something quickly. Um, but we also have gifts here for your knitting friends or relatives um, that we think would be really nice. W one thing I'd like to say though, because I, I found myself yesterday stressing a little bit, and I'm not somebody who stresses or recognizes that I'm stressing, but I did recognize that I was a little frantic over what I was getting people for Christmas. I don't get a lot of gifts. I don't have a big family, but I have friends that I like to get things for and a staff, and I've done nothing so far. Um, so I'm going to try to make things simple um, for myself, and I hope that you can do that too. So maybe I'll take an afternoon and sit down and just bang out um, what I'm going to get, you know, order online or if I can make something quickly. And we have shown a few. We showed you last week the weekend cowl. And um, today I wanted to show you another cowl that is a little more colorful. And I'm, that's what I'm wearing. It's called Stately Windows. And you can see it, it's just easy color work and slipped. I think it's mostly color work, um, but easy color work. Um, knit in the round on probably a size seven or eight needles. So it's a quick knit. And we made up some kits that we thought would be really great. So I'm going to show them to you. We picked out two different yarns. This one is from Lang Yarns and it's called Frida. And it um, is sort of gradient striped, which we thought would be really fun with this. And the solid color with it is um, Rios. So this particular color is called Frida, and we paired it with Sunset from Rios, which is one of my favorites. I just love this. So I think that would be really beautiful. Um, the next one I have is from Rios Hollyhock, which is this gorgeous sort of magenta color. And we paired it with um, number, this is called number 13, and it's um, in the Frida, and I think it has a beautiful sort of rainbow co of colors, so I like that one. And I have another one, this is a paler version. I think I'm, um, some of these have different names, some have names, some don't. This one we called Oranges, but again, this is the Frida. And it's a um, Merino Extra Fine Superwash. So it's super, super so soft. It's a single ply. And they're tw 220 meters. So it's a generous amount of yarn. And this is the um, Rios we paired with it is English Rose. So I think that'll be, and there's a nice contrast between these colors. Another one is called Teals in the Frida. These might be names that we gave them. I don't know for sure. But it has some gorgeous colors and paired it with um, Teal Feather, which I think is just gorgeous. And it's a brilliant, brilliant teal. And then for a more subtle, this could be for a guy, if you know a guy that likes to wear cowls. Cowls are great when you're outside and throw it under your jacket, you know, just wear it when you're um, throwing on your jacket to go somewhere. And it keeps your neck warm and your chest. Um, so, and this one I think would be great for a guy or a gal. This one's called Glitter in the Rios. And this one is Browns. So it's got brown and gray, all kinds of shades of gray and brown. It's a very pretty. And finally, um, we have this one we called pinks. It's got lots of pinks in it, and we paired that with magenta 
which is an awful lot like the hollyhock. So they're interchangeable, I think. So if we had run out of one, we could pair it with the other. But these kits will be online um, in a day or two. Um, so you'll be able to find them. And probably by the time you see this, they will be online. So those are an idea. We had a wonderful surprise today because I didn't think she was coming until this weekend, but it turned out it was yesterday she came. Our lovely, wonderful Fiola came with lots of goodies. So she has made for holiday shopping tote bags. Look at these. I just, this fabric is so fabulous. And of course she lines it with a pa with another fabric and these beautiful canvas straps. I guess you call them canvas. Um, so we think this, oh, and it has a pocket on the outside. You could put your phone in there or whatever you'd like. So that's one of the colorways that she has. This is another fabulous bird motif with the, um, this is, is this oiled canvas at the bottom, which gives it e extra durability and another cute inside. But I just think these birds are very special. Again, pocket on the outside. Oh, with a different, haha, <laughs> different fabric on the inside of the pocket. If you can see that. Um, and then we have another one, which I think this is fun. Oh, and the inside of this is fabulous. Sweaters. Look at that. And these are so beautifully done. She really just is a beautiful creator. Oh, and this one has sheep in the pocket. And of course she embroiders her radish top designs. And oh, we've got two, three more. Oh, beautiful. This one is fun. It's polka dots. And oh, another gorgeous inside with, what are these guys? No, the um, animals are raccoons. There are animals in there. And then, what does she have in the pocket? Oh, sheep again. So I think she's putting sheep in all the pockets. Here's another one that kind of goes with that one. And they are, I guess they're all different animals. Squirrels, raccoons on the inside. This is fun with the houses. That's good because they have they do, yes. So you can have a whole sweater in there. Now, and this also has sheep. You could actually have two projects because, you know, some of us have two going at the same time. Yes. Yeah, you can throw this in the plane, in the plane and throw in your wallet and your phone and your passport, whatever you want to put. And this one, this has these fun circles. I love this on the inside. This and oh, this one doesn't have sheep. This has some another surprise. So these are really fun I, and really useful. Then I don't know if I can have time to show you all these, but she came fully loaded with, and we all love these that she makes these little drawstring things. And she's got all kinds of cute. Oh my gosh, these are so adorable sewing machines and spools of thread and yarn and needles. So I'll just quickly show you some of these. They're just, they're sweet and she just picks the best fabrics. This one, oh, how about that fabric on the bottom? I don't know, some of these may go home with me. I'm not sure. Another fun one. Ay. Okay. Well, there's lots more. So then she has these others, and I just use, I have one of these, and I use it every day. Here it is, and I've had it for, it looks like forever. These are one of her earlier ones, but gosh, it fits. 
everything I need for my knitting. So I've got it filled. I even sometimes throw needles in here, but my scissors and my um, tape, I even have some buttons that I wanted. I have my crochet hook. I have my barber cords and then a ton of um, buttons and um, pins and stitch markers. So it really fits quite a lot of stuff. So um, here's a few of them you can see and they're ever so useful. So that's the inside of this one. This one, oh, these are so fun. Gosh, and she does colored zippers. Oh, that one's fun. They just make you happy, all these colorways. I mean, fabrics, what am I saying? Oh, look at the inside of that. So there are a lot, there's a whole stack to choose from. So come in quickly for the best selection. Um, they're really terrific. She has a great eye for fabrics. So, we're so happy that she found the time to do this, and um, she's hoping to get us some lotions and soaps in the near future. So I had some other ideas for holiday gifts. One, I find these really fun. These are um, needle protectors. So you just slide your two needles into the, the top of these. They're open and um, that keeps them from all your stitches from falling off. You can actually, I take that back, you slide them in from this end. There's um, a rubber um, tip on this and then it has a slit and so your needles will fit in there. You could do one for each needle depending on the size or two. So it comes with three. And um, the other thing is we've showed you these before but Robin was just saying these are the um, TK bar barber cords that you slip onto your needle um, when you were, if you have to put stitches on hold, if you want to try something on. And it's so easy because you just push the end of this onto your needle and simply slide the stitches on. There's no threading or anything that has to go on like if you were using scrap thread or scrap yarn. And then when you're ready to put them back, you push this back on the needle and slip all the stitches onto the needle. So it's an efficient, um, clever way to do it. I use them all the time, particularly when I'm, um, and of course they come in lots of colors, when I'm putting my sleeves on hold. Let's see if this, yes, yeah, so they come in lots of bright colors. Um, so those are a great gift. And this is a little fun thing that you might want to just buy for yourself. Um, if you're um, giving a handmade gift, these say made with love, buy, and then you put your name here. They come with string. I think there are three to a package. I'm not sure. Five. Sorry, five to a package. So we have those. Those are a great idea. Or if you have a friend who knits um, things for other people, you could um, get that for them. And finally, the last thing I have, oh no, I have one more, um, is our fi fix a stitch. So a lot of you use your crochet hook um, to pick up dropped stitches. Well, this comes with, you can see the hooks on the ends of these, and there are how many sizes? I think six sizes because there's a hook on either end, but maybe, might be wrong. I think they're three sizes. I think they're the same size on either end. So it has it on either, either end, so you can pick it up either way. So, but it's a great tool to have, and you can see what it looks like here. So that's a good little gift. And then this one I love, and I use these all the time. These are the scissors that you can disguise in your bag when you're flying on an airplane. They're also good because you can close them up and then you have no sharp 
they're a little stiff when you start. You have no sharp ends hanging around in your in your knitting bag, though this comes with a little um, bag. But these I find are great. I use them all the time. So I wanted to, oh, I have one last, this is a nice big gift if you want something. This is for the guys out there if you want to give your loved one um, a nice gift. This is a wool winder. So when you buy a, a skein or a hank of yarn, not a skein, a hank, has to be wound into a ball. So you have to have the ball winder. And then what goes with it is the swift. And this is a picture of what it looks like. You put your, your hank around here and then attach it to your wool winder and just wind. So you can, um, you know, you can set this up if you have a craft room or something, you can set it up permanently in there. And then, because we don't recommend, if you're doing a project, we don't recommend that you wind all the yarn at once. We usually say do one or two at a time because sometimes you can wind the yarn too tight and if it sits like that for a long period of time, it stretches the yarn a little bit and it can change your gauge. So it, it's a very good idea to just do a few at a time. And then if you have this at home, you don't have to, as I always say, you don't have to get in your car and come to the yarn shop. Of course, we love to have you come to the yarn shop. So. It, for us, it's a mixed blessing, but for those of you who like to wind your yarn at home, this is great. And you don't have to employ your significant other kids to hold their hands up while you wind. I wind around my knees, and I have a wool winder in my basement, and sometimes I'm just too lazy to go down, so I just sit and do it around my knees. Right, so those of you who may those of you who've been sort of following along, this is my Weir sweater, which is made with um, Wool Addict's Footprints, which is this, and mohair held together, which as you can see, um, sort of mutes this um, beautiful yarn. I did it because, number one, I didn't want to knit a fingering weight. This is a fingering weight. So when I put mohair with it, I get to a sport or DK, depending. But I'm now on a size 7 needle. And I just love the fuzz on this. So that's what I've been doing. And this sweater was knit in pieces. Well, sort of. A front and a back. And then you picked up stitches around the sleeve. And then you sew the seam. So I've done one side. And this has a high-low seam, front and back. And so what I do, generally when I do something like this, is I start in the armpit and go down, or I go from here to the armpit, and um, then go down this way, down the sleeve, or up this way. I don't find that it matters all that much. What does matter is that you aggressively pin your garment, which means a pin about every inch because you don't want your seam to bunch up. So I've done a an, one of the perils of knitting with um, dragging mohair. Sometimes the mohair doesn't catch, so what I do is I'll go in later with a crochet hook and pull that little strand through. So I did a mattress stitch, which is a, a nice stitch. It doesn't show much of a seam. Um, clearly I did better down here than here. I'm not sure why. Although there were, d I don't know what I did. But it can be almost um, indiscernible. The other side gives you a nice seam. And um, very often I like pieced, um, knitting in the round is wonderful and that's my preferred method. But I do like a s particular sweater you know you're going to wear a lot that has s is seamed, it gives it a little bit more structure, I think, and wearability, so things don't stretch. Anyway, I wanted to show you, I'm about to do the mattress stitch here, and um, I'm a little tangled at the moment. 
Um, what you can do, and I guess what I did do on this, was I did, I left some extra yarn. So I'm going to use that to sew up the seam. So I have my tapestry needle. And I'm going to start, this would be, um, I would have put pins in. And what I recommend doing is pinning it here and here, then in the middle, then in the middle of that, in the middle of that, in the middle of this, and so on. So always do them in the middle. Um, and then you're sure to get it um, seamed correctly. You won't get too much yarn um, bunching up as you go. So when you do a mattress stitch, you're going to, and I have this yarn connected over here. If I didn't, if I was starting with um, just an, a random piece of yarn to do it, what I might do is weave in the tail before I start so that I don't have to go back and weave it in when I'm finished. So then I'm going to come across to the other side. And as you do this, you're always going to be picking up what I call the two legs of the stitch in the row. So on a seam, you don't have to count, on what this kind of seam, you don't have to count stitches. You don't have to do like three and one or skip three, like when you're picking up stitches. So this is just every two. So I come back over into the other side and, you, and get two bars. You can see two there. And I don't have to pull it tight yet. I can just do it loosely. But then you want to go back in to the hole where this yarn came out of when it was going across the way. So I'm going back in there, and I have two bars. Can you see? You can see those. And you want to stay consistently parallel to that row. Can every? I hope you can see that. And that will make your seam quite perfect. You want to be careful when you come back and forth that you don't cross over so you don't get a like a zigzag in there. So I'm going to go back in the hole and grab two bars right there. And then I can take hold of the end of this and I'm going to pull. So I pull until the seam disappears into the other side. So it just pulls right through. So this can actually go relatively quickly. So I go back, of course, I'm here. So I want to go back over here. And I go back in where, see the yarn that came across right there? I want to go into that hole and grab two. And then I come back and go into the hole where that yarn is coming from. Grab two. What you don't, and I go back across, grabbing two. Now, some people do, they just grab one. I have found that to be unnecessary. I think you get a decent seam with grabbing two. So now I've pulled it tight. You don't want it to pucker, but you want that seam to disappear. If you can't see, and this is where the yarn came across the seam, you can pull it apart a little and then grab two. Um, one thing when you're sewing something, I would not, when you're doing a seam, I wouldn't have anything longer than this. Even that's a little long, but that should get me to the end. If you have an incredibly long piece of yarn, um, what happens is it tangles and you'll spend more time tangling, untangling that. Um, and we want to be efficient so, and not waste time on things we don't have to. So again, I come, I come across. You can see they're straight across. They aren't crisscrossed. Go back across. And then again, I can pull and watch the seam disappear. You don't want puckering, but it does disappear. And I can find where I went across, which is right here. 
you're not sure, you can pull on it and you can see. So I go back into that hole and pick up two bars. You want to keep checking. Now as you go, I would be taking out my pins, obviously, would have been all in across here. And you want your pins to go in, not like this, because that takes up too much space. You want them to go in perpendicular to the horizontal of your seam. Um, and they would be pinned all along and you just take them out as you go. One thing that can happen is one of these sides can get ahead of the other because of pulling. So you want to be sure you pull evenly and that these are even. If you suppose you had you were coming toward the end and you had extra fabric here and not enough here. What I do is I would take one bar from this side and two from that side, and one bar from that this side and two from that, and that tends to even it out. So you can see how you can get a beautiful seam. And again, um, and I may not have said this, but when you do this, as opposed to um, like sewing, you're putting wrong sides facing each other. So you're, as you're doing it, you're looking at the right side of your work. Good. Also in this pattern is a um, kind of a wide band in um, ribbing to finish this off. So this is the last thing that I'm doing on it. And to do this, you're, um, and it's in most patterns, and of course I did on the, um, sleeve and on the bottom band. I did in a rib on a needle. I think this is two sizes down, but I think that's what was in the pattern. But it's often one or two sizes down so that um, these are, this is nicely gathered in on your um, sleeve. And then this so that you don't want it to pucker, um, which it could if you have used the same big needle. So um, when you're picking up stitches, you need to read closely um, the number of stitches you want to pick up. Say it may start on this neck seam, shoulder seam, and tell you to pick up um, 87 stitches. That's a for instance. So a good idea is to fold this in half and mark the middle, and so you would want 43 stitches on each side and maybe one in the middle. So when you go across, so that it's done evenly, you want to, you could even count, here it's going to be one stitch per row. Here, this is different because these are, well, they are rows, but I don't think you're picking them up at the same rate. And by that I mean sometimes a pattern will tell you um, pick up three stitches, skip one, or pick up five sti stitches and skip one. You'll never see where you skipped that stitch. It doesn't matter. But I would begin here, and I'll, I'll go back and read my pattern and find out exactly what to do. But when you're picking up stitches, you have to go from the right to the left, picking up, picking around. And you start with your right side facing you. And I'm going to stick my needle in front to back and wrap my yarn around. And pull the yarn through. Then I'm going to go to the next one and pull my yarn through after I wrap and to the next one. So I'm leaving and I'm just, if I do it this way, you're going to see a little bit of the, are these decreases? I think so. As you can see, here they are. Now as a design um, element, you could leave those. I think I'm going to, or you could pick up below that. But I think that's picking up too far away. So. I'm going to far down into the fabric. So I think on this particular pattern, 
I'm going to leave it. I want to be at the edge. So it's underneath and you have you want two two legs of the stitch each time you pick up. So I'm going along just sticking my needle through from the front to the back. And so I'm doing pretty much one stitch per row. And here, so those are rows. These are actually, you're doing stitches. You're going into a stitch. So here, across the back, is picking up one per stitch. So I do two on the top. So if you look at the top, there are two legs, and you want to do two legs, not one, because it'll be stronger. Now, as I look at this, and I might take this out, because you can see the edges of the stitch there from the um, bind off at the top, I don't know if I want to see that, and I didn't have it here, so I'm going to just take these out, and I'm going to go under I think all three legs that I see there so that I oops. and this is the why we knit you can change things to be the way you want so just remember the pattern tells you things but you're free to and that's the great part about knitting is that you can please yourself you don't have to do exactly what the pattern says if you see something that's better. So you see I like that better. It doesn't show the edge of this stitch. And so I don't want that to be there. This I didn't mind because I thought that was kind of a nice little edge design, but I don't want that all the way across. So I would continue all the way around. Down here, it had me put one stitch on a marker, so I'm not sure what's going to happen when I get there, but I'll do what the pattern tells me. Um, I heard somebody the other day talking about, you have to have a little bit of blind faith when you read a pattern. Um, and if you know it's a pattern that a lot of people have done, don't automatically assume because you've read ahead that you don't think something's going to work. If you do exactly what the pattern tells you, um, it should work. If it doesn't work, take it out and try it again. You know, keep doing it and don't just not do it because you, in your head, you've written ahead, you've read ahead and your head says, no, I don't think that's going to work. I don't see how that's going to work. I don't get it. Well, you'll get it if you try it. So that, that's an important thing. Anyway, that's my little pearls of wisdom for today. I hope that you're all having a good holiday season that you're not stressing out about gifts. We gave you lots of choices. If you've got knitters in your life, there are lots of things. You can come in here and we can, um, we can put together a nice gift for you, for your, um, for your favorite knitters. So I hope you have a great week of knitting. Um, come in and shop or shop us online. Be sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe if you can. That helps us. And uh, we'll see you next week. Have a great week. Bye-bye.